A frequently asked question is, what can I do with an oxygen acetylene torch? I've done many videos using the oxygen acetylene torch, but these are all focused on a specific aspect or technique. This video is an overview of the ways that I use the oxygen acetylene torch. Much of what I do is brazing. This is an example of brazing two pieces of hot rolled steel of different thicknesses. Here, brazing two pieces of 22 gauge copper with a lock seam. The object here is for a neat braze right in the groove without spreading the brazing over the adjacent copper. A slight amount of paste brazing flux has been applied using a 1 16th inch bare bronze filler rod. Cutting copper with the oxygen acetylene torch. This does not produce a clean cut. I use it because it produces an edge that enhances the maple leaves. This requires a strong oxidizing flame. Flame coloring copper. This is a copper leaf that has been wire brushed to remove any oxidization. Playing the flame over the copper produces a number of colors. If you don't like the color, the copper can be wire brushed again before starting over. Copper tubing using Silphos, raising this copper reducer thinning onto one half inch copper tubing. Once the copper is hot enough to accept the filler rod, a small amount is applied and then flows around the joint. The result is a clean, almost invisible joining. Brazing with silver solder using a thin wire of silver solder. By moving the torch back and forth, the silver solder is worked into the crevice. With silver solder and sulfos, only minute amounts are needed to form a strong joining. Copper annealing. As you can see, this piece of copper is fairly stiff. Annealing is heating the copper up to red hot, moving the torch around so as to not burn a hole in the copper. Then allowing to cool. Once cool, the copper is much softer and ready for forming or shaping. These are some kitchen hooks I recently did for hanging my walks. The oxygen acetylene torch is not a substitute for the blacksmith's forge. But for small jobs, it's adequate. The torch works well for heating this steel up to be twisted. Plus, it's always fun to make something. The torch is excellent for wanting to bend metal such as this one quarter inch square. 
using the pipe for leverage, heating the steel up to red hot, and the steel was easily curved into the desired shape. This little anvil on the vise is no substitute for the blacksmith's anvil, but again, it is adequate for small jobs. Using an old pair of needle nose, directing the heat exactly where I want it, and forming this hook. Gas welding. There are two types of gas welding. Fuse welding and filler rod welding. In this example, fuse welding two pieces of 18 gauge mild steel together, bringing both pieces of metal to a melting temperature and allowing to form together. In this example, using a 1 16th inch steel filler rod. Theoretically, the filler rod weld is stronger than the fuse weld. This is one quarter inch mild steel. In this example, fuse welding the two pieces of one quarter inch mild steel together. A stronger weld is possible with V'ing out the two pieces and welding with filler rod. The cutting torch. Thick metal is easier to cut than thin metal when using the cutting torch. This magnified cut is not bad, but with practice could be better. If I only had one piece of welding equipment, the oxygen assembly torch would be my preference. <laughs> 